This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining for the session. Let's start the class for today. So we were discussing about our app service in our previous session. So where we have created our application service related plan, that is app service plan. So in today's session, what we are going to do, we are going to create our application service and we will develop our code and we will try to push this code to the application service. So in simple terms, what we are going to do is our first task is like we will try to create a, an app service. So once we create this app service, In our local laptop, we'll try to build a, a code. So we are going to build a .NET code. And once we are done with uh, building this code, or once we develop this code, what are we going to do? We're going to simply push the code to the application service. So whenever we are creating an application service, by default, this application service is going to give me a end URL. So in simple terms, our main motto is the first task, we are going to create our application service. Once we create an application service, we will develop the code in our laptop. Once we are done with that, we will simply push the code to the application service. And finally, we are going to verify whether whatever the code which we have developed in our local laptop, is it really reflecting in the application service or not? So as we discussed in the previous session, application service is a, a platform as a service which is provided by Azure. So where you just need to take your code to that. Just to copy your code to that platform, the rest uh, the end to end things that platform will take care. So what does it mean? Sir? We didn't understand. That is. Let's try to understand this guy properly. Let's uh, log into our Azure portal. So now it will ask me for authentication. I'll approve the code. So now it is approved. So now we are landing in the portal. So now in the search bar, what we are going to search, we're going to search for our app service. Soon after you search for it, on the right hand side, you see there is a guy, app service. Click on that. So now we landed in the app service part. So as usual, we see there is a button. You can either click here or you click this one, create app, anything is fine. So let's try to create our own application service. So as part of our picture, we have total four tasks. One is creating this application service, two, building the code, three, pushing the code, four, verifying the application, whether it is working properly or not in simple terms i'll go to the application service we already created our azure we already created our azure app service resource group sorry we created our resource group so just uh, go ahead and click on your dbs az devops workshop as part of my application service name i'll say like a dbs AZ workshop app one. So this name should be unique. Whatever the name which we are giving for our app service, it should be unique, which means like whenever we say like an unique identity, it is like your Gmail. Only one user in the entire world can have this 
email address similarly it is like your passport number in india only one guy will get that particular passport number so a unique identity same way you have to supply your unique identity so where azure they will automatically add the domain name that is azure websites.net i will tell you how you can customize this domain let's say like uh, you guys are coming uh, with a new domain such as anil.com anusha.com ashok.com in my case uh, dbstechnologies.com sean.com devops.com like this whatever the domain uh, you have on which you would like to host that is also possible you can integrate your own domains to this app service and you can host your applications so now i am going to give the domain name uh, that is my application name what name i would like to create and here app service supports both your container platform as well as a code if you say like uh, no i want to run my entire application as a container that is also possible but i don't want to go with the code because i am not sure how much uh, you guys remember docker or i'm not sure like how many of you know this uh, platform what is a container what is a docker so i will go with the code part here as part of a runtime stack if you recall we discussed that application service is a pass service so app service is a pass service which means i just need to take my code code plus app service will reset me to hit the end user it will result me to hit the end user directly you take a, your code along with the application service you just to give the url to the end user they'll start consuming that service so now the question is what sort of code is this is it a java code is it a node js is it a dot net is it a ruby or is it a python we have many developers in the market who works on n number of uh, n number of platforms so out of which what app service is doing is they are supporting multiple languages such as ruby python php node js java dot net so in simple terms almost all whatever the languages people work in an industry all the languages this platform supports so now as part of our today's session we are going to deal with our dot net core application so i am going to select a dot net 6 so where in the region part i will choose us east now when it comes to the windows plan what do we have we have our app service plan which we created in the yesterday's session that is dvs azure workshop plan so where we are opting for a shared infrastructure and 1 gigabytes of memory so once we are done with this simply click on review and create so now validation is completed so now when i click on a create this guy is going to create my app service once my app service is ready this guy will share me a end user url which i can start consuming it then and there <coughs> so let the deployment process complete so deployment you can see like what and all the things it is uh, creating in the back end so once everything is done it will shows the shows the resource deployment is completed 
then you can go to the resource. So till that time you have to wait. So let this guy complete the work. So now it is telling me deployment successfully completed. So now either you can directly click on the go to resource or else you can search for a app services here. So here, let's try to understand a bit more about this uh, application service. What sort of benefits we are going to gain out of it? That is, whenever we are clicking on our application service, so we have multiple options on the left hand side. We are not going to discuss on all these things now, but we will discuss uh, a few of these items. So here, on the right hand side, if you see, these guys are supplying me a URL DVS AJ workshop application one dot Azure websites dot net. So you don't need to worry about your application domains by default. Azure supplies you with an URL. So now soon after I hit what Azure is doing, they are giving me that and information. Okay, man services are up and running now if you want you can simply go ahead and deploy your code this is a sample page where we can conclude that our application app service got created successfully now what are all the best features what these guys are providing for this service so one of the best feature which we need to talk about is about your deployment slots so what exactly this deployment slots is doing? That is at any point of time, if we are treating that this is our application. Now, whenever I consider my application, I need to test my code. So where I can test directly, can I dump the code in the production? Can I play with the production? Are we supposed to play directly in the production? Is it a good practice, guys? No. 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 <clears throat> so we should not play with the production. Then how I can make sure that my code is working? What I should have if I'm not playing with the production? We need to uh, deploy and test the mind. Very nice. So before we hit the production, we should understand that we need to deploy this code in a, some other environment such as your dev sid uat pt preprod and production so in order to support these kind of a different environments what issue have come up with a plan they have come up with a plan as a deployment slots which means you can create a dev sit uat PT slots here. Now, whenever you want to deploy, you can deploy in that particular slot. And you can test your end to end application inside in it. So under a free tire, you cannot uh, or you are not eligible to consume this. I'll repeat it under free tire. You are not eligible to consume this guy. You need to upgrade your service plan. But I just thought of giving you a uh, heads up on your deployment slots. But when you guys are coming for the course, that point of time we will discuss uh, in depth. How do we deploy to multiple environments? How do we productionize our code? How do we test our code? How do we ex configure the CACD pipeline for this end-to-end -end implementation? All those things we will discuss in the class. But for today, it's just like an uh, overview what exactly the word deployment slots is right so apart from this part whenever you feel like you would like to configure your own custom domains as we discussed what is a custom domain so custom domain means now azure is giving me a domain stating that azure 
websites dot net so something dot azure websites dot net now you don't feel good uh, no no i don't want to consume azure related domains i want to have my own domains my own domains in the sense we have lakeraj lakeraj.com manoj.com muni.com so they want to say okay application one dot lakeraj.com application two dot uh, manoj.com application three dot muni.com you want to have your own custom domains in simple you want to host your own names for your own applications then then these guys have a come up with a concept called uh, custom domains so here what you can do is you can configure your own uh, domains you can uh, select it and uh, even if you want to enable http yes that is ssl protection for your domains you can even enable it so http yes so in simple terms whatever is required for you to fulfill your end to end goals for your application everything is uh, possible using your application service last but not least at any point of time if you would like to configure auto scaling for your end to end application that is also possible whenever you feel like you need to automatically increase your infrastructure automatically configure your infrastructure on auto scaling for your app service that is also possible but again under free tier it is not possible when you are upgrading your plan to your production or under dev test if you are upgrading it to b1 or f1 so then this scale out part you can execute it but i am just giving you an overview what sort of features which you are going to get out of this app service so finally we are done with our end to end application service creation we got our url from azure as well so now the next part that is what is our task i have my developer he is going to have his laptop he will develop the code now inside in my azure portal this is our azure portal in our azure portal we are going to create our app service so where we built this app service on a dotnet platform so now what this developer is going to do whatever the code this guy have developed he is going to push the code to the application service platform which means we want this code to be deployed to our app service once my code deployment is successful then what i will do i will take the application service url and i will start heading on my end to end application so now if we start accounting what are and all the things we completed that is the first part app service creation we are done with it now the second remaining work is developing the code the third work is pushing the code or i'll say publishing the code so the fourth task is to verify if our code is working properly or not 
so now in order to develop a dotnet to framework you need to install your visual studio latest version is 2022 if you want you can download a previous version as well so now what am i going to do i just open my visual studio code and i'm going to click on a create a new project you see there is an option here create a new project click on it so soon after i click on it it will load for some time and it will start giving me the options man which platform you are planning to create so here i am going to search for my dotnet core application so i am going to choose my asp.net core web app so i'll select it and i'll say click on next so i am going to say like a dbs azure workshop i'll say dbs azure workshop so i'm going to create a, a folder in that folder i'm going to dump my code i'll click on next so now i am getting a my dotnet 6.0 as my framework version i'll click on create now the question is man chan are you going to teach dotnet as well you know guys we don't need to learn dotnet in order to develop a small simple hello world program i am just showing you how exactly a developer works okay so you don't need to learn a dot net for this you don't need to learn java you don't need to learn python you don't need to learn your ruby node js nothing is required because we are devops we are not developers hmm? keep a note it's not required for you to learn but if you are learning it's an added advantage so that you will understand what exactly the developer is doing so it will take some time because uh, now this guy is uh, building my end to end uh, code so this framework it will give me a default website guys you don't need to write anything it will automatically generate the end to end code it's a default uh, template so it depends upon the laptop configuration as well for few it will be very fast for few it is going to take some time because this guy needs more memory hmm? visual studio code it is taking too much memory so you have to wait till it appears okay finally we are here now what are we going to do that is on the right hand side you see we have a an item or we have a folder called a pages click on that in the pages i have my index.cshtml so this is my index page if you recall in the yesterday session we created our apache we created index.html page we created our index.html page similarly for a asp.net core application index.cshtml file so now here i would like to test my end to end code so what am i going to do is i'll remove this guy and i'll add a small item ai team welcome to dvs azure workshop let's save it so now imagine i am the developer i am developing the code in my laptop his requirement is quite simple he want to see this code in the production he want to see this code so that end user how he is feeling so they want to deliver this product to the end user so how they are going to do it that is when a developer feels like okay he is done with his end to end code what he will do he will test it locally so how we can test locally we need to first build the code that is right click on this folder and you get an option of a build here you get an option of build click on build so now what exactly we are doing whatever the code developer have developed we are converting this code into a software 
or in terms of in terms of an application we call it as a artifact so now this guy is telling me man build is successful now for testing purpose what i need to do i need to run this code what i have to do i have to run this and i need to verify whether my code is working properly or not how i can do it you see there is a button here play button so simply click on that so what we are doing we are running our application and we are testing whether our application is running properly or not in our local laptop so this guy have started now what he will do he will open up the browser and he will start hitting on the local host on the respective application port so just wait for a some minutes so now here if you observe what it is telling me it's clearly telling me that hey hi team welcome to dvs azure workshop and uh, i can see that this guy is running on the port number 7183 so locally i build the application locally i run the application locally i feel like okay everything looks fine now developer will say get uh, some uh, confidence now what developer will do he'll simply so here let me stop this application so now what i will do i'll simply go here and uh, there is an option called uh, publish we have an option called publish simply right click it and click on publish now soon after i click on a publish it will ask me man you are asking me to publish this code where you want me to publish you want me to publish it to docker container registry or you want to send it to some uh, iis server or you want to send it to a particular folder or you want to send it to a azure where you want to send i'll say yeah i want to send it to azure why why because in azure we have our application service currently running i'll click on next so now application service if you recall when we are creating there are multiple ways whether you want a linux or whether you want a windows or whether you want to run it as a container so we have multiple options there so now can anyone tell me what is our application service is it a windows based or a linux based windows windows based it is windows based good so simply click on a windows click on next so now what happens it is going to get authenticated automatically to my microsoft account that is my email address and now here if you go it is telling me man under your azure account you have your application service and application service name is dvs az workshop app 1 so when i go back to my console if i go here when i click on my app service what is the name dvs az workshop app 1 same name it is coming here i'll select it now i'll simply click on finish so what developer is doing guys he is simply publishing the code to the production right so here once i have selected my once i have selected my respective application service you click on a publish button here so we are publishing our code so where we are publishing our code we are publishing it to our dvs az workshop app 
so it is going to cost you at least a, a minute or a two so just be with me so once publish is completed from our local from our local laptop to the azure website it will give us a confirmation that publish is completed so previously if you observe the same website dbsc az workshop app one dot azure websites dot net it was giving me a sample page but now what we should get we should get our own application which we build it locally so now if you observe publish is completed so now the same website when i hit it i can see like i am getting the same message a hey, high team welcome to dvs azure workshop i uh, no no shan this is a white screen but you were showing us in a black screen so see here this is the black window if i refresh the same site so i will get my newly developed and a deployed application up and running so it's just a matter of a 5 to 10 minutes work guys so whenever you are going for a app service things are going to be very very simple and you can do your end to end integrations then and there right so this is what your app service is going to help you in developing and deploying and verifying your end to end applications into the azure portal so now finally what we did we are done with our application service creation we are done with the developing our code we are done with our publishing code finally we verified our end to end application so we have successfully deployed our code to our app service now before i proceed further if anyone is having any doubts you can ask me now any notes yeah yes sir if we have db so how will configure that thing with the app so app service supports a connectivity to your virtual network so like how aws is supporting a database service same passion azure also have a database service so in the database service you simply go ahead and create your respective database server you will get an url integrate that url with your application service that is inside in your application code in the properties file you dump that particular database url and the connectivity will be automatically established but if you are creating your database in a particular network then it is your responsibility to make sure that your app service is also getting created in the same network so that you will not face any issues with the connectivity if you say ah oh, no no shan my database there in some other network my application service is in some other network then tell me how i can do it then you can configure the peering convention peering connection between these are two different virtual networks so then the communication will establish clear abhishek yeah okay sir thank you ha uh, arjun sir ah uh, arjun tell me so, we build code from here so if there is any code change and the developer has updated the new code and build the uh. application is it going to reflect the new code directly in the website or we, are, we need to use the chat yeah that's a nice question guys see here what arjun is asking is he simply asking man you are simply pushing the code from a local you are telling that it is a production url how come you can push the code directly into the production from your local so that's the reason we are going to learn about our devops the best practices for building deploying and configuring our end to end applications in azure so with our devops practice we will make sure that this end to end code build deployment process is going to get automated 
via our Azure DevOps platform, which we will see in our upcoming session. As part of today's demo or as part of today's workshop, we will see how we are going to build and deploy this end-to-end -end code to this application service in a, a standard DevOps practice. Right. So for understanding purpose, what we learn today, that is developer will develop the code and we can directly deploy this code to the application service. What is an application service? How it works? We understand the behavior and the nature of nature of our application service. Now, this is not the standard approach whenever a developer feels like he simply want to push the code to the production. Right, you should close your company. This is not the approach, which means developer when he feel like okay, he is done with the changes, he need to follow some standards. Whenever he develop the code, whenever he want to go to the production, he cannot directly just jump to the production then and there. That's the reason we are always depending upon the DevOps strategy of working via our CI CD pipeline, which we are going to design most probably in another one hour. We will design and we will implement it. OK, Arjun. Fine, I'll take it as a yes. Any other doubts apart from Arjun? No doubts. Is it having a repository services also? Uh, DevOps, yeah. Azure DevOps. Mm, yes, Harish. They do have it. I will explain you in detail what those guys are having, how we are going to do it. Those things we will cover in our today's workshop. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. I was unable to unmute. I got Thanks, Arjun. Thanks for the confirmation. Fine. So we understand, uh, okay. Azure portal is there. Azure is a supporting multiple services such as your storage service, network service, server service, load balancer services, domain services, pass services, container registries, container instances, what not, whatever you ask, everything is there in Azure administration. But Infrastructure wise, these guys are providing the best platform. But market is demanding for a word called a DevOps. What exactly this word is DevOps? Why we have to go along with the DevOps? What is the benefit that we are going to gain out of this? In simple terms, any organization Starting from a startup company to a multinational MNC, each and every company, they are going to have their own sales team. Whenever we call about a, a fancy word, DevOps is very fancy in the market, right? So each and every organization, they do have their own sales team. Now, what this sales team is doing, they'll go to multiple customers. They'll say, yes, man, our company is having so many qualified engineers who can satisfy your end-to-end -end requirement. What customer feel based upon the brand or based upon the stuff what you have presented them during the presentation time, they will start giving you a requirement. Now, when you got a requirement, what you will do? You will initiate a, a new project. For that, a project 
manager will be allocated. When a new initiation starts, when a new project starts, is, it, is your project manager is going to sit along with you and he will uh, compete with you in developing the code? Never. So he will not do it. He will just guide you to do it, that's it. So yeah, I'm going to have my developers. Now, when my developers are developing the end-to-end -end code, There is a someone who should say like, man, this code is not that much good. This code is not properly working. This code is having these many bugs. This code is not up to the mark. So my testing team will come into the picture and they will say, man, developer, this functionality is not working. It's not up to this much load. It is not having a, this behavior. This button is not properly aligned. This font color is not this as expected so someone should be there who should correct the developers that's the reason we are bringing testing team into the picture now once the testing team says like okay code and all everything is done then we are going to go with our quality and assurance team so what this team is going to do they'll say like okay man your code first code how many times you repeat the same function? You define 30, 40 variables. Where are you using these variables? Whatever the package which you have specified, that package is having some vulnerabilities. Why you are using that package? So the quality of a code, which is very, 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 very mandatory thing before we go for a production. So in order to just check this end-to-end -end things, we'll be having our quality assurance team. Now. Once uh, the developer feels like, okay, QA is approved, performance engineer approved, testing team approved, okay, finally, let's take the code to production. Then what will happen? Then my build team will come into the picture. Build and uh, release team will come into the picture. Now the question is what this team is doing, whatever the code you developed, they will convert that end-to-end -end code into the software. So this software, they will develop it. And finally, we are going to deploy this software. That is, this build and release engineers, they will deploy this software to the infrastructure. They are going to do what? They are going to Deploy this end-to-end -end software into the infrastructure. Now, whenever we deploy our software to the infrastructure, infrastructure is nothing but my Azure portal or Azure services. My server, network, load balancer, storage, databases, domains, whatever you create in the Azure website. Now, once I have successfully deployed my code in my infrastructure, then what will happen? My end customer, who is eagerly waiting for my product, he will get a update that a new version got released successfully. So my application got released. Now, soon after an application got released, what this customer is going to do? He paid so much money to the company. Na? Of course, he will verify. Now, soon after he is verifying the code, is he going to feel happy? No one will feel happy. Now, what they will do? They will say, man, I asked for this font. This font is not good. This color for this background is different. This application feature is a little bit too old. You took so much time for developing this product. Market trend got changed. Payment gateway, whenever I'm trying, payment gateway is a failing. What kind of application is this? So again, they will come with the feedback. In simple terms, it is a, it might be a bug. It might be an issue. It might be some new feature. 
something they will come back again to us again we have to follow this end to end cycle so here if you properly observe this end to end cycle we call this as software development life cycle in simple terms st lc this is quite common across any organization no changes no changes now under my sdlc process i decided okay let me deliver the product to the end customer that is let's say that i got a new requirement that i need to deliver the product within a six months of a time i felt like okay developer is the crucial team who need to complete this task let's say i'm going to give two months time for the developers so testing team is also playing an equivalent role to a developer so hence i feel like giving a two months of time to a testing team one month time to my quality team one month time to my build and release team so after six months of a successful efforts when i released the product after six months when i released the product to the end customer customer if the application is delivered as per his expectations he will feel happy but at any point of time if the application is failing when you deliver whatever the application which you deliver if it get failed then people will call for an rca root cause analysis rca stands for root cause analysis now what customer will do he will say like man this product is worst product this is not what i asked for i need a new product tell me how much time it is going to cost you so as part of this picture if you clearly observe this portion of work whatever you see here i cannot change this portion of work because testing team they need two months definitely quality and assurance team they need one month build and release engineers they need one month blindly they will say like boss timelines and all no no we cannot manage it it's bit hard for us but end customers will start shouting at us stating that man i paid so much money for you you and your organization but you deliver a faulty product to me you deliver a new product that delivery also it is going to cost him six months time only i cannot force a developer to take and develop the product within a less time if he feel bad he will screw the entire obligation so in simple terms whenever we follow a normal legacy approach of a build and release process minimum to minimum for a delivery of an application and a delivery of a product to the end customer 6 months time is mandatory for me that is the reason a market have evolved with a new ways of working they bought a new role into the market whom we are calling him as a, a devops engineer now the question is that what benefit are we going to gain simply you have written a devops word here what this guy will do so what this guy is going to do is he will take the requirement from the build and release engineers he will take the requirement from the quality assurance team he will take the requirement from the testing team and whatever the work these guys are manually doing daily when they get a requirement whatever the manual things this guy is doing or these people are doing everything this guy will automate it so whatever the work these teams where they took four months of a time he will convert this four months of a work into 5 to 10 minutes of a work so overall here what we are saving is saving the delivery 
टाइम टू द एंड कस्टमर एंड डिलीवरिंग द प्रोडक्ट विथ इन जस्ट टू मंथ ऑफ अ टाइम in simple terms here what we are doing guys whenever we are introducing a new role called a devops we are saving testing time quality and assurance time build and release time which means overall i can close my eyes and i can say like i am going to save 4 months of my valuable delivery time to the end customer so overall when you introduce a devops role into the project the benefit of what you are going to gain get is time to deliver the product will be on demand basis when customer says like man i need a product i need this a feature i need this functionality we simply ask a developer man how much time it will take for you to develop you tell me that if developer say 15 days we will add 15 more days to it we will tell the end customer that man just give me a month your product will be delivered to you so the time to hit the market is going to be drastically changed when you introduce a devops role into the project now you might be thinking that come on man how come it is possible so how it is going to possible is whenever we take a different roles here as part of our previous picture we have a developer now what this guy is doing is he developing a dot net code is he a python developer is he is he a php developer is this guy is a developing a java or this guy is working on a node js we don't know based upon the requirement this guy may work similarly we have a our second role testing team we might be thinking we learn or we heard this word testing 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 what this guys are doing end of the day are they doing unit testing are these guys are verifying the functionality of the code or functionality of your application or are these guys are verifying the performance testing as well as are these guys are doing user acceptance testing so what these guys are doing so these are all the different ways these are all the different things what testing teams will do now when it comes to the quality and the assurance team what these guys are doing here so these guys are verifying the code quality and they are verifying the vulnerability checks the best example for this is like vulnerabilities sir what do you mean by vulnerability what is bit heavy to understand so a recent vulnerability happened in the market like log4j as a package where widely developers used as part of their code so that vulnerability lead to an major issue so such a kind of a vulnerability is not only that but also the quality of your end to end developed code someone should be there who need to verify it someone need it should be there who need to judge that this code is a valid code so your qa team will do that work for you so similarly whenever we call our build and release engineers what they will do .net python php java node js they will generate the software software is nothing but my artifacts now for doing this much work we need n number of tools in the market so in a glance view if you observe this picture properly 
let me capture it over the screen so we discussed multiple stages right developer will be there he will develop the code testing team will be there qa team will be there build and release team will be there so on so xyz team is there now we have learned that these many teams are working these many works are pending from these guys now in order to implement that end to end workflow what we need we need tools tools such as for developing the code building the code releasing the code deploying the code operating the code monitoring the code testing the application everything is a work so now this much work uh, we need to have n number of people that's the reason we are introducing devops into the market where this entire workflow our devops engineers are going to automate it using different tools that is whenever the code part is coming you have a different options to choose such as your git bit bucket or you can go with your gitlab or you can use some other repository management tools whenever you are planning for deploying your end to end code you can deploy it to a docker you can deploy it to aws you can deploy it to azure you can deploy it to your own server wherever you want you deploy it whenever you want to verify or whenever you want to do the deployment process in an automated approach you go with ansible you go with the chef you use help charts or you simply write your shell script and you execute it for monitoring purpose yes you can use your nagi os you can use a splunk you can use a datadog or you can use your app d you can use a grafana with the combination of a prometheus what not all the tools are there so in simple terms whenever someone thought of entering into a devops platform he have to cross the path of n number of tools this is a sample guys which i have took a, a screenshot so now you might be asking me son where you got this screenshot as usual story guys google it out you will get the pictures so i am not the owner of devops right like you i am the same guy simple guy right i have uh, took all these documentations from google only right so when you start looking for a devops guy you see n number of tools where you need to learn n number of things that is the reason what azure have come up with is they want to provide this entire solution or they want to provide this entire devops as a service in simple terms when any devops engineer when he is working for any project he need to learn docker he need to learn git he need to work with jira he need to work with ansible and jenkins selenium testing servers configurations monitoring n number of things they need to either purchase a license or they need to configure it or they need to install it and they need to maintain these number of softwares where azure felt like it's bit hard that's the reason they started coming up with an option called azure devops so if you want a repository don't go go to azure devops if you want to have a jira don't go here and there go to azure devops if you want to have your own pipelines for build and release don't go here and there azure devops will give you if you want to have an agents if you want to have a testing if you want to have a performance testing and if you want to have a monitoring and if you want to build and deploy your end to end applications you don't really roam here and there simply go to azure devops take whatever you want and end of the day when you consume it you have to pay the money but a single stop where you will get everything you don't need to roam here and there simply take the subscription activate the account start consuming your end to end services so now 
these many tools you don't need to learn if you learn azure devops then you can manage your entire end to end workflow so what does it mean sir it means quite simple so the same picture whatever we have that is for our release build deploy xyz things for each and every work whatever you have we have an equivalent service provided by azure let's say i want to go with jira for performing my end to end scrum related work my jira tasks such as my agile process you don't need to worry azure devops supports you azure boards let's say you want to build and deploy your code in an automated approach azure provides you release pipelines they provide you build pipelines now you don't need to go for jenkins jenkins slaves azure devops can help you out with all those uh, integrations so similarly you want to push your artifacts that is your software to nexus or you want to push it to jfrog so now you don't need to purchase a license from uh, your nexus or a jfrog you simply take the subscription from azure and you can push your own uh, softwares or artifacts to azure artifactory so in simple terms whatever you need everything azure is uh, supporting all those things with a platform called azure devops so why people are so much crazy why people are moving everything towards azure devops is this is one of the reason a single place where you will get everything on demand basis and that too as usual story pay as you use so whatever you are consuming you are going to pay only for that quite simple so this is a major difference between you are a devops guy or you are a general devops versus azure devops now you might be having a, a doubt that is man devops is having so many tools that is we have chef we have ansible we have our tokos we have kubernetes we have a jenkins and we have our jenkins slaves we have so many tools if i start writing right at least in next 15 minutes i can write those many tools we have in the market sir i already have all these tools with me sir when i go to azure devops can i use these tools 200% you can use them here what you need to understand is azure devops is not giving you all these tools azure devops is giving you a platform a single platform where you can do all this work in their platform so that you don't need to do all this work on your own azure devops since they have all these setup configured there you can dump that knowledge or that execution into your azure devops platform so now there is one more question in your mind shan if i learn azure devops i don't need to learn ansible i don't need to learn docker i don't need to learn kubernetes no it's not like that you have to learn so when you say like uh, ah shan i am going to learn azure devops i don't need to learn everything no nothing like that this is as usual this is a add on for you it's an extra benefit where you can see everything happening in a smooth way in a single console but 
वॉट एवर द नॉलेज विच इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर यू टू बी कॉल्ड एज ए डेवलप्स इंजीनियर दैट इज अ मैंडेटरी यू कैनॉट स्किप इट you have to learn a linux you have to learn shell scripting you have to learn a containerization you have to learn a virtual server maintenance and management you have to learn a ansible you have to learn kubernetes there is no other way that you can skip it no if you want to enter into devops that is mandatory but then what is the benefit we are going to gain with azure devops is in order for you to do this end to end implementations Azure DevOps supports you a platform where you can run everything in their platform in a smoother way, in a flexible and automated approach. Now, before I proceed further, if anyone is having any doubts, you can ask me now. Yeah, hi, Shan. Prashant here. Prashant, tell me. uh regarding this uh, docker and kubernetes right like uh, in azure devops where they are existed like in portal i know in uh, azure, azure devops mm -hmm. portal you deal with the azure container registry azure container instances azure container instances and aks these things you have to create in azure portal and you can integrate these services in the azure devops so inside Got azure it. devops you cannot create it because that is an infrastructure related service all the infrastructure all the pass related services azure is supporting you from azure portal now if you want to consume these azure portal resources then you need to integrate those resources into azure devops portal got it sir yeah uh, hi sir uh, pradeep aha uh -huh. pradeep go ahead yeah this azure devops is different and azure administration is different or uh, whatever you are teaching with that we can uh, put in a azure azure administration also devops also yeah or it's sir, completely different yeah as usual sir based upon the current requirement we will develop our entire course content that is the reason we have a come up with a new course that is azure administration plus azure devops so this is going to be useful for you because you will be learning all the administration related work which will satisfy your needs in your current organization plus since you are going to learn your end to end automation platform whatever you build here you can automate those things in the azure devops platform so it's a combined course where we are okay. giving it to our students okay thank you hmm. hari sorry hari tell me yeah, son uh, son actually say so like this uh, this platform devops uh, azure devops platform right uh, mm -hmm. so any other cloud like aws provides this kind of a platform or only no. this azure is on we don't have anyone in the market okay. so this is only the, azure devops uh, this is the only guy who is giving this but maybe in the future someone may come but i don't think so they can compete with this platform this is giving an edge to microsoft right i think yeah it is purely coming from azure that is from your microsoft as a service you will feel it i will make you guys are feeling this platform today hmm? okay hari Yeah. One more question, Prashan. Ah, uh, Prashan, tell me, Prashan. Ah, uh, you said in your previous slide, right? Like uh, testing quality assurance and uh, release by uh, release and build. So all together becomes DevOps. You said, right? But still, uh, uh, at least wherever I am working, I, I am a testing background guy, right? So uh, few features we cannot automate. 
so those yeah, at least it really has to be done ha <laughs> ha so here guys uh, prashant question is very valid question uh, please listen carefully he is he is simply touching the very thin line of conversation right prashant here we are not going to terminate employees such as testers qa teams <laughs> performance engineers build and release engineers we are not going to terminate them but the benefit what we get when we introduce a devops engineer is if a devops engineer is not there at least in a worst case scenario i need three testers i need two to three quality assurance team engineers i need at least three to four people build and release engineers this many people i need to make sure that i am having in the project otherwise i cannot go live that is the reason we are bringing a devops into the practice that is when devops come into the picture i don't need three people testers qas build and release one guy is enough who is having a knowledge about that application more than enough so rather than having a three per each domain i will have one per each domain where i will start taking their manual work i will start converting their manual work into automation framework either i use my shell scripting knowledge or i will write my own python apis or i will use my ansible knowledge or i will use my terraform knowledge or in azure they supports arm for infrastructure as a code i might use it so whatever the knowledge is required i will gather all those knowledge and then i'll make sure that instead of a doing or instead of making these 10 people work i'll make sure that i am working on behalf of them and project building they can reduce by removing the people but definitely as you said in the project i need a tester because i am not from testing background na how i will come to know what kind of a testing i need to perform for an application i don't know that we need people but not a big count like previously we used to have 10 15 guys so now it's not required one or two is more than enough here prashant perfect perfect chan thank you mm -hmm. okay so now we understand what is a devops what is azure devops so how this azure devops looks like let's see so whenever we are going to dev.azure.com so i can simply say like login so the website name is dev.azure.com this is the website So now, in order to start working with our Azure DevOps, we need to create a and a project. So let's say like this is my company's DevOps Azure site. I'm going to create a new project. So once you logged in, it will give you an option of creating a new project. Let's create it. So in the project name, I will say that it has dvs azure workshop so now here they support you two options that is you want to go as a public or a private so now i am going with a private because i don't want to expose my project to outside world now there is a button called advanced here click on it so it is going to ask you man version control what you want to take are you planning to take a team foundation version control or are you planning to take a git 
I'll say I will go with the git. Now there is a work item processing that is in a agile ways of working. In a agile ways of working, we have multiple things. So whenever we were planning for a delivery, we can follow multiple approaches. That is either you can go for a agile, scaled agile, CMMI, Scrum, or Kanban. Out of all these uh, approaches, which approach you are planning to give for this particular project, I will say I want to go with the agile ways of working. I'll select my agile and I'll click on create. So now my DBS uh, issue workshop project got created. Now, what is the benefit that this guy is going to give us? That is, please uh, concentrate, guys. They are providing you Jira in terms of Azure dashboards. They are providing you a repository management tool such as you were a Bitbucket, a Git, a GitLab, whatever you use. You don't need to use them anymore when you go for your Azure DevOps platform because they are providing an option called Azure repositories. Whenever you want to go for your build and release processes such as your we are using a different tools for our build and release such as our Jenkins. We are using our Jenkins. You don't need to go for your Jenkins anymore. You can simply use your Azure pipelines. Whenever you want to plan for your testing, your performance testing, your unit testing, or your application functionality testing, everything you can configure using the Azure test plans. Whenever you feel like you need to save your respective softwares, whatever the artifacts which you guys are creating, if you would like to save them, you don't need to push it them to Nexus. You don't need to push it them to your, your JFrog. You can directly use your Azure Artifactory. So whatever you want for fulfilling your end-to-end -end requirement, that end-to-end -end things are provided to you, as a service that is your Azure DevOps, a single platform for all your needs. So, what is the benefit that we are going to gain? Is benefit is quite simple. In a single place, I can get everything. Now, sir, theory and all you okay, sir. Just teach us something now out of this, right? How we are going to work with this platform effectively? And are there any uh, monitoring uh, tools here? Uh, monitoring yeah. provider? In this, you don't have it, but in the Azure portal, Azure is a supporting Azure monitoring as a service. You see, there is a guy here, monitor. You can use that. Hi, sir. I have one doubt. Ah, uh, Vengadesh. Uh, just now, you told me that in uh, Azure, they are given in, in DevOps, like uh, for a pipeline, Jenkins instead of giving pipelines, for Git instead of giving repo. For if you want to use Terraform and Maven, that time you have to you install additionally, or they are given any other service like that. Time. So, if you recall, in Jenkins, whenever I'm running, where I'm running, I am running on my Jenkins slaves. Yes. Right? Same way Azure DevOps, they have agents. Mm -hmm. Now, whenever you want to run Maven, you don't need to install. It's already pre-installed in their agents. Okay. When you want to run your Terraform code, <laughs> you don't need to install Terraform. They have already installed in their agents. So pre-baked softwares will be available in the Azure agents where we just need to specify what command we need to execute. Rest everything they will take care. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Fine. 
now let's try to understand something shall Please? i have a question can i ask now mm, Raveen, mm, go ahead yeah so shan how it is different from the plugins what we see in other platforms we have a plugins so how this um, add-ons here it is different in uh, azure devops compared to other uh, other platforms see there is no nothing much difference Praveen. like it is like the same example which i have told you in yesterday's session right whether you want to eat pizza whenever you want to eat a pizza whether you create it or you want to eat which is created by someone which option you would like to opt for is entirely up to you it is not mandatory for me to i have to go to pizza hut i need to take the pizza from pizza hut only no if i like i will prepare my own pizza i will eat my own pizza but pros and cons apply what are they if i am not preparing it well then taste will not look good or i cannot feel the taste but if i am going to pizza hut if that pizza is not good i'll immediately complain and i will tell him like man worst man it's not good i'll not pay the money now it is depending upon us whether to go with the vendor or whether to take the headache by ourselves it's up to you but there is no much difference the major difference in the question what you asked is either you install it you manage it you configure it you deploy it or else you use the services what the vendor is providing to you and you simply click a next button and a submit button that's it so that the click whether you want to click on that single button or whether you want to configure everything with your own hands it's up to you yes and why actually this question come up is you told like there is no other uh, providers who can give us this uh, devop platform like azure which supports mm -hmm. all the tools but if i consider uh, i am taking an just example mm -hmm. may not be exact match with azure uh -huh. like uh, if i consider jira so jira also give me a git add on i can go for or if i am looking for selenium i can take it so there are a lot of uh, marketplace things available which i can add and uh, i can utilize them on that platform so that's why i am trying to understand how it will be different for me ah, good so here in jira if you want to work you have to maintain www.jira.previn.com now in that jira you will create a task that a task have to be given to a developer that a developer have to be work on a particular repository so repository.previn.com another url now this jira and this repository is my office related information very secure data which means i cannot host jira on the jira cloud I need to purchase a server. I need to install the Jira software. I need to configure this Jira software. I need to patch it, maintain it, manage it. Similarly, repository.previn.com is the domain which I need to host on a server. I need to purchase the license because you are an enterprise guy. You cannot go with open license. GitHub.com, you cannot use it. I have to purchase a license from the GitHub. I will install the GitHub repository last server and then I will configure it. I will maintain it. I will patch it. Not only this, but also I need to perform my build and release process. Again, you will say Jenkins.previn.com. I need to take the domain. I need to install Jenkins software. I need to build my servers. I need to take my agents. I need to configure those agents. I need to patch those agents and then I need to integrate these entire three tools Jira with the repository with the Jenkins and the slaves. Big work. For us building this end to end setup itself, it is going to cost me in a worst case scenario if you are a very, very niche and full skilled DevOps engineer, it will take 15 to 20 days for you. 
same work if i go to azure devops within a matter of 2 3 minutes i will do it so now i am not telling you that azure devops is awesome i am telling you that this platform is good when you want to start like the same way whatever the existing setup which we have on our servers which we are maintaining which we are managing that is also there that will be there this will be there but adoption is what companies looking for so when someone is giving you everything as a service here i have my repositories i have my jira dashboards i have my pipelines i have my test plans everything i have within a single click button so why should i spend so much time and effort on configuring something why should i spend so much people and so many um, things so still if you want to use it you can use it otherwise no is it clear praveen yes sir Hmm? nothing wrong your question is absolute 100% i agree with your question right integrations everything is possible but who have to do you have to do your team have to yeah. do but when you go to azure devops azure will do it if pipeline is not working i'll raise a support case and i'll ask them man what is this pipeline is not working man i'll ask for a refund i'll say like this month bill i'll not pay but same thing can you do it in your physical infrastructure or whatever the infrastructure you built it they will come and no. they'll sit along with you okay pravin come come my pipeline is not running man production is there today right <laughs> okay yeah good difference that's it pravin okay thank you it's clear now sham mm. thank you now if you guys are still have doubts don't worry we will have again questions again let's continue the class we all are familiar with a one more fancy word what is it ci cd right let's try to understand what is this ci and cd i'm not going to club both the guys at a single stretch let's try to understand one by one ci continuous ah uh, what is it guys continuous what continuous implementation Integration. What is CI? Integration. Integration. Very good. So, what is continuous integration? Let's try to understand it. This is my developer. He will develop the code. Now, in reality. if we don't have azure devops then what is the scope what is the picture like pravin have asked when i don't want to go to azure devops i'm happy with my environment so that environment is this which i'm going to tell you now so whenever any developer when he is developing the code what this guy will do he will simply push the code when this guy is pushing the code where he will push he will push to a scm tool that is a source control management tool such as github now when this guy wants to push the code we are going to create a repository or in a short key we say repo so now whenever he is done with the work he will push the code now whenever i want to build this end to end software i need to take the help of my build and release tool such as my jenkins where inside my jenkins i will configure a build job now this build job 
I have to run this build job on a slave. So that's the reason I am going to take a my Jenkins slave. And finally, I am going to build my software. Please make a note from here onwards. I will not use the word called a software and I'm going to use the word called artifact. So for your understanding purpose, I was calling that name as a software, but uh, in ideal world, it is our artifact. Now, whenever we are building our uh, artifact, this guy should inform me whether it is a failure or it is a success. So now, how come this build job will it trigger automatically? It will not trigger automatically. I need to do something. So I will configure the hooks from my repository to my Jenkins build job. So how this guy will come to know that this guy have done some work? My developer is going to click on a button called PR button. PR stands for pull request. Now try to understand the workflow. That is, when any developer, when he is done with his code, what he will do? He will be given a button called a push button. He will click that push button. Like the work, how we did it, right click it and publish. So in this case, we are publishing it, but in reality, developer is going to push the code. Where he will push? Is he going to push to the production? No one will push. No one dare enough to push the production. So he is going to put push the things to the repository. Whenever this guy is pushing to the code to the repository, he will click on a second button called a pull request. So soon after he click on a pull request, what is going to happen is inside my Jenkins, I will create a build job where this build job is going to run on my Jenkins slave. Where it will tell me whether my developer is going to or whether my developed code is properly working or not. In simple terms, if you are ready to integrate your code at any point of time, where this integration is going to tell you whether you are a success or a failure, then such kind of an integration, we call it as a continuous integration. This is what is happening in a real DevOps world. But the definition of your CI is as it is, no changes in the definition. But the only change which is going to happen is the terminologies. That is, when the developer is done with his respective code, previously he was pushing to the GitHub repository. Now he is going to push to Azure repository. Previously, he was clicking on a PR button. Now also he will click on PR button only, but this PR button is going to be available in Azure DevOps. Previously, we were using a Jenkins, but now with the new adoptions, we are going to use our Azure pipelines. That is in Jenkins, we have our Jenkins pipeline. Mm, I thought you guys, few of you are my uh, students. So for whom I have already thought, uh, what is a Jenkins pipeline as a code using Groovy? Same thing, but in a different approach in Azure, we develop the Azure pipelines. 
the way how we were executing our end to end code on our jenkins slave same thing it's going to be get replaced with the azure agents whatever the softwares where we used to push our artifacts to our nexus or jfrog now this we push it to azure artifactory concept wise implementation wise everything is the same guys it is just changing the services or changing your applications previously i used to use the github now i am using a azure repository previously i am happy with the jenkins now i am migrating everything into my azure pipelines they previously i used to work with my jenkins slaves now i am going with azure agents i was happy with the nexus and jfrog now i am going with the azure artifactory apart from that whatever the work you implement it's going to be the quite same approach but only we are just changing the platform that's it so now we understand what is a ci why we have to learn what sort of things we are going to replace as part of our end to end work we already created a project in our azure devops let's start implementing this end to end workflow how are we going to work with the, these guys so before we proceed further any doubts with anyone Uh, normally after build we should create a pipeline right what do you mean by after build so once the github code uh, moves to the co uh, build right? code build like once uh, if there are no errors then we need to create the pipeline and run the steps so or is how it do you build that are you going to build it manually no automation only uh, for that also you need to write pipeline na no? is it okay hmm yes it is okay okay see here guys so now what are we going to do is we are going to create our repository so on the left hand side you see repos right click on that so this guy is going to create me a repository with a name dvs az workshop he is telling me that man this is a your end to end url you take it up or else if you want to push it to a via your command line so then it is asking me to add uh, this url and push the code so we already have uh, developed our code that this is my end to end code so what i will do i'll take the terminal so i'll say like a uh, ls hyphen l so let me initialize the code so now i want to push my code to this repository so what i will do i'll add this as my remote and then i'll simply try to push the code so here what am i doing generating the git credentials this is my username and this is my password so i'll say like a git to push a origin master now one second so let me add the things let me commit it
so now what am i doing i am simply pushing my end to end code to my repository that is here when i refresh this guy so i can see like my end to end code whatever the code which i was having in my local i push the code to my repository so now i have my code so where i have my branch as my master so imagine that this is our end to end ci pipeline so where i have developed the code in my local laptop i push the code to the repository now the question is i need to build this code i need to build this code so how i can build it so on the left hand side azure is supplying me azure pipelines so azure pipelines is my build pipeline and they are coming up with one more category that is a release pipelines so let's try to learn with a azure build pipelines so i will simply click on a create a pipeline so now as part of my pipeline creation i am going to select i have multiple options here so this platform it is not only supporting their own repositories but also these guys supports multiple vendors such as your github such as your bitbucket your gitlab or your own enterprise your git hosted server whatever you want you can select it but out of which i am going to select azure repositories so where i can see like a dvs az workshop so this is my repository i'll click on it so it is asking me man i can see some code is there in your repository i can sense some code is there what kind of a code is that i am telling it like it is going to be my asp dotnet core so the beauty here is like you don't need to write your pipelines automatically azure will generate the pipeline for you so here if you observe what is happening this guy is generating me a end to end pipeline code so it figured it out okay this is a dotnet core application they have a predefined a template where they are generating my end to end pipeline so you don't need to worry that oh, no i need to learn a pipeline and all nothing like that so out of this end to end code i don't want to spend time on the testing now i am removing it so here let's try to figure it out different options so i will remove all these things which are uh, not required as of now but i will explain you a bit better when you guys are coming for the classes so here we have a different options such as trigger we have a pool we have a variable steps and tasks what does it mean it means i am asking my build job i am asking my jenkins pipeline to execute when when something got changed in the master branch you execute it i am telling my pipeline hey pipeline go ahead and you please build a new agent with the name as windows latest agent whenever i would like to define any kind of a variables i can simply use my variables section whatever the tasks that is cloning the code building the code pushing the code that is task 1 task 2 task 3 so in simple terms whenever you guys are going with your azure devops this pipeline creation is automatically generated by azure itself on top of that if you want to add some sort of modifications of course you can add it so now what are we going to do is one second let me see whether i captured this or not i captured it so now what are we going to do is this is me this is my code i just want to build my code and push my artifacts simple steps i am not making it too much complicated for now okay let's start it slowly that i am going to build my code and i am going to push a 
my artifacts out of it that is when i go here i don't want my test stage when i come when i observe here this guy is giving me trigger he is giving me a pool so where i need to take my windows 2022 agent if you would like to know the list of agents what sort of agents uh, azure is uh, supporting then as part of your uh, material i have supplied it but still you can go to google and you can search for it so here if you observe microsoft by default they are uh, supporting different agents based upon our requirement if you are using a windows related uh, software then you can use windows servers if you are having any kind of a linux based applications you can use your ubuntu if you are if you want to build your end to end code on a mac os that is also possible they are supporting mac os as well on top of these things if you say like no no shan i don't want to use azure agents i want to use my own agents that is also possible you can add your own agents you can configure your own softwares you can do your own builds that is also there but as part of today's workshop i am sticking with azure related things but when you guys are coming for the classes we will understand in depth about how this end to end things are working out of which i am telling this guy like man i want an agent with an image of windows 2022 these are all the different predefined variables and finally what we are doing we are building our we are building our end to end application code now what is the next step which we have the next step is once i am done with the build i need to publish my artifacts so now i don't know how to write my pipeline i don't know how to select that particular option nothing to worry here on the right hand side you see show assistance there is a button called show assistance if you are familiar with writing the code then write it down if you are not familiar take the assistance here you can search i want to publish the artifacts so publishing artifacts to azure pipelines there is a task selected and here i will name this artifact name as a dbs workshop i'll click on add that's it my task got added my task got added see it will publish my end to end artifacts so now what i will do i'll simply click on save and run save it and run it. so now if you observe your build job is in a queue so my job is a queue it is telling me man you don't have a parallel agents because i need to enable my billing let me enable it so click on the parallel jobs so i need to change the billing part so here i updated my billing so now i'll go so i'll click on my pipelines click on her uh, your issue pipelines so this guy previously it was not working so now what you can do if you want you can change the code and you can push the code let's say developer is here and we have our index.cs.html file i'll say like a uh, testing ci pipeline so what developer will do 
he will simply get a status get a add so i will simply say like a commit i'll give a commit message that is testing ci pipelines i'll say simply push master so now to which branch i pushed it so i have pushed this to my master branch that is whenever i go to the pipelines now i should see automatically a pipeline should be up and running so when i go to the pipelines so some recent issues declared in the pipeline view details so configuring the trigger failed edit and save the pipeline again okay so go to your pipeline click on edit one second guys let me refresh it okay guys sir uh, there is a small issue so since i have committed it let me do a small thing guys so i'll go to the pipelines again i'll click on a new pipeline so as your repository i'll select it dot net core application i'll say 2022 so i don't want uh, this is a testing phase so let me remove it so show assistant i want to publish my artifacts so i'll say like a dvs workshop i'll click on a add so what i will do i'll right click it and i'll click, simply click on save i don't want to run this guy so when i go to pipelines all so previously this guy is there let me delete it i don't want this one so if you want to rename this guy i can rename it i'll click on save so here we have our pipeline so let's go to the repositories so here if you observe let's go to the pages so as part of my pages i'll click on my index.html so i have my testing ci pipeline let's click on edit i'll say like a, i'll give final test click on commit so now i'll simply click on commit message so when i go to my repositories so i did some a small change to my master branch that is when i go to my pipelines here so i can see there is an automatic automatically a build job got triggered that is when i click on this guy when i go here so what is happening a job is getting triggered click on it so the first stage that is my initialization the second stage checking out my dvs app workshop repository third part is it is building my artifacts on the final stage it is going to publish my artifacts that is when i go to my initialized job here what exactly it is happening it is taking the hosted agent that it, it is a, taking the a image that is windows 2022 which we have given it is a taking an, that particular image and it is a creating a dynamic slave or dynamic agent 
So in that agent, what this guy is doing, he is installing the necessary tools and he is installing the necessary commands and this guy is building my end-to-end -end code and finally this guy is publishing my end-to-end -end code. So finishing publishing artifacts. So now when I go back here when I verify I can see that one published. What is this? Our artifact. When I click on this guy, I can see DVS workshop where I can see web app dot zip. So my artifact got pushed automatically to my pipeline. That is as part of my end to end CI CD. In the CI part, what we did in the CI, we pushed the code, we build the code, and we published our end to end artifactories. Whatever the artifacts I have, I have published it. But now the major question is like, we have our artifact. Now we need to deploy this artifact. In simple terms, in the app service, when previously when you go here, we have what? We have our URL. When I copy this URL, when I paste it, when I paste this guy, it's going to display me all the time a default web page. But we have already published our code that is DVS Azure Workshop. But now what we did, we changed our code. We changed our code to our testing the CI pipeline. Now, whatever the code I have built, it, I have to make sure that I am deploying that code to this particular app service. That is. Once we have successfully executed or once we are done with our CI, what we do? Once we are done with developer, he is developing the code. He is going to push to Azure repo. When this guy is pushing to the Azure repository, my Azure build pipeline will get a trigger. And this build pipeline, it is a saving my artifacts. Now, what I have to do is inside my Azure, I have my app service. These artifacts, I need to deploy them. Deploy these artifacts to whom? To my app service. So we learned what is a CI. So till this portion of a work, that is my CI work. If you are ready to integrate your code at any point of a time, we call it as a continuous integration. Similarly, if you are ready to deploy your code to your infrastructure at any point of time, then we call it as a continuous deployment. In simple terms, now I need to figure it out a way that how I can deploy these artifacts to my application service. So this is my build pipeline. Now this is going to be my release pipeline. Now how my release pipeline will come to know, okay, I need to get a trigger, I need to deploy. We need to create a auto trigger. We need to configure a release pipeline along with that we have to make sure that we are configuring the triggering that is on the left hand side if you go you see there is a button called a release releases click on it now in this i can simply click on 
new pipeline. Now, before I click on a new pipeline, anyone, any doubts? Any notes from anyone? In integration, we don't have any validations as such in the current, whatever the pipeline you have just showed, Sean. Yes. So mm. how we can have any validation here? So same way when you go for a pipelines here, right? You can simply click on a edit. So whatever the test plan, whatever you want to configure, they support you different tests here. So based upon the validation, like, uh, okay, whether my port number 80 is open or not, such as your unit test cases, whether my functionality of the application, so whenever I'm passing a slash URL, whether it is working or not, you can configure the test cases like this. But if you feel like, no, no, I cannot uh, perform these uh, test cases, but I need to execute a particular command, then only I can validate it. Then you can simply configure any command using either, if you are happy with your uh, normal shell script, you can write a small shell script and you can execute it. Or else if you are happy with a small command, you can take the command line here. So whatever the integrations which you want to validate, all these validations you can Execute it using a different options what Azure is supporting. If nothing is working out, whatever they give you, it is not satisfying your requirement, then create a small shell script and uh, use uh, your bash script or you can use your command line which will be running some command. So when you click on this guy, it will generate a task. In the task, you can give whatever the instructions you want. It will run. Okay, sure. Sean, I am seeing here as a Go Go language. Also, is it going to support the Go language uh, yes. commands? If you have a Go language code, and if you are building a Go language code, then you can use them. Okay. Got it. Sean. Thank you. Cool. Okay. Guys, if no doubts, let's proceed further. Here, if you observe, what is our main need? Our main need is quite simple. I'm getting artifact. I need to see my artifact in my website. Click on a new pipeline. So let's click on empty job. I don't want to create anything. So in the stage, I will say like a, my application deployment. I'll click on save. Okay, so close it. So this is your Azure release pipeline. I will say like a my app release. So here you're getting a save button, save it. So now let's try to understand what we are doing in this release pipeline. In this picture, if you observe properly, in my release pipeline, I am telling that man you take this artifact you take this artifact artifact where we are getting from our ci pipeline we generated our artifact now i am telling this release pipeline that you take that software and you perform my stage one stage two stage three as of now we have only one stage but based upon our requirement we can start creating one by one but in our case what we need to do we need to collect the artifact which is coming from the previous build pipeline and i have to make sure that i am doing the deployment to my app service in my stages so how I can do it? That is, I'm telling my release pipeline that man take an artifact. So it will ask me, okay, I will take, tell me when. I'll click on artifact. So it is telling me that man, from where you want me to take from the previous build pipelines or you want me to take from Azure artifactory? 
or you want to integrate a or take the build from a jenkins or from a docker hub or from azure container where you can integrate n number of platforms guys it's not only the azure platform you can integrate everything all the devops tools whatever you use everything you can integrate with your azure devops platform now i am telling like man keep it simple please take it from a previous build so now it is asking me tell me from which build pipeline i need to pick i'll say my build pipeline is a dvs ej workshop so soon after i come here it is telling me okay man i am going to take this guy i'll say add now the question is when this particular stage need to execute when it we, when it should get executed guys what would be your thought once when my stage should get executed hmm. once the build is success it need to be triggered very nice so once my previous build is a success then this stage need to execute so i need to configure a trigger so how i can configure a trigger is this guy you see small guy is visible here click on it so soon after i click on it i need to make sure that i am enabling my continuous deployment trigger i need to configure on my continuous deployment once you are done click on save okay so now here if you observe this button is enabled now so whenever that build get executed this guy also will start automatically now what do i need to do i need to deploy this artifact to my application service how i can deploy it click on this guy so click on a job or a task so i am going to tell this guy as a please make sure that you are running it on a windows 2022 and this is my artifact where you need to pick it up so now what i will do there is a plus button here click on it now i need to deploy this guy to my app service i'll start searching for my app service so soon after i click on my app service it will say okay man what you want to do you want to deploy deploy where app service deploy add it so now my task i have added it i'll click on it now display name is fine it is asking me connection so azure subscription under which subscription this application service is there i will click on this and i will select my subscription so now i have to authorize this azure devops to access my to access my azure portal services i'll click on authorize it will take some time for it to fetch the entire data that is from your app services from here it need to fetch what are all the app services it is having so now authorization is completed so under the app services if i click a, a drop down i will see dvs eaj workshop app 1 i'll click on it so now it is asking me okay man package and all what package you would like to deploy so you can leave it as it is or else you can select this you can go here you can click this guy and here you see web app dot z either you leave it to the default or it will automatically pick it you give you select here or you leave it to it it will take anything is fine so let me select a web app dot z i'll click on okay so now i am done with my end to end deployment process i'll click on save okay so now what we did when i go to the pipelines i have automatically gave the input okay that is your build pipeline which will give me the artifact when that guy is generating artifact you make sure that you are triggering this deployment in simple terms when any developer whenever he is doing any change to the application code let's say i am the developer i am going here i'll go to the pages and i will go to my 
index.cs.html file let's say i am editing it directly so i am going to say like a implementing ci cd on a azure devops platform so now what i'll do i'll click on commit i'll say commit the message now developer he committed the message on the branch which means when i go to the pipelines see here this pipeline it automatically getting triggered when i click on this guy see my build job it automatically got triggered when i click on my build job execution what it is doing it is building my agent it will check out my code it is going to install the necessary softwares whatever is required and finally it is going to build the code so once the build is done it is going to push my artifacts so once my artifacts got pushed i should see my release pipeline as of now it is showing me no deployments found but once this guy is successfully completed this guy will invoke my release pipeline it is telling me man i am done finishing job so now when i go back to my pipelines previously it was telling no deployments found but now i can see there is a release release one when i click on this guy when i go here see what is happening a trigger since we triggered it now my application deployment is in the progress it is automatically getting initialized now it will automatically deploy my end to end code whatever we have built it to our main page so previously this is my main page when i give hi team welcome to dvs azure workshop this was the casual message which it was giving me now i should see my updated code so when i go here still the deployment process is uh, happening let it complete so once the deployment is a success then we should see our updated code in our website at any point of time if you would like to view the logs logs just to click on that you will get a logs selected so you will see what is happening behind the scenes so just give it a some time almost it is pushing everything so now finish the job job is successful this was our application service previously it was giving us a message hey hi team welcome to dvs azure workshop now when i refresh it <coughs> sorry so now i can see like hey hi team welcome to dvs azure workshop implementing ca cd on a azure platform so imagine a situation guys where you have a plenty of applications where you need to perform build and release when you guys are going on a, an azure devops platform it's just going to be plug and play you don't need to invest so much time and efforts on configuring maintaining managing your end to end infrastructure so this azure devops platform is going to be more helpful it's like a handy where you can integrate your repositories your artifacts your build pipelines your release pipelines your test plans everything in a single place you will get it so this is the what beauty which you guys are going to gain as part of your azure devops with azure administration now you might be having a doubt like no no shan i don't want uh, i don't want to is it really mandatory that we need to learn azure administration yes guys it is mandatory without knowing how to build a azure infrastructure how you are going to configure azure devops so those two things are interrelated so you have to learn both the things 
so considering these facts as you always know that whenever something got changed in the market as part of our dbs technologies definitely we will be coming up with some latest technologies so that's the reason we are coming up with a new course that is azure and azure devops it is going to be a, a new course guys where we are planning to start most probably in a two weeks of a time so where you can enroll yourself you can reach out to sindhu or ramesh they are available over these numbers if you feel like interesting we would like to upgrade ourselves we would like to learn something new then feel free to come for the classes this is just a workshop which i thought of giving it to my students so that they can enhance their skills that's the reason i simply took one small application and we have configured our end to end ci cd process for that application but if you guys feel like you need to learn more things more about azure infrastructure as well as azure devops then feel free to come for the classes so it's going to be again a two and a half months course so where we will deal with the starting from scratch till whatever is required for you to be called as a devops engineer everything i will teach you right so now this is the workshop guys which we have planned and which we agreed and as per the agreement we delivered uh, the workshop for you so now if you guys are having any doubts you can ask me yes sir i have one question related to like uh, performance related like uh, daily basis if a customer is having to update like millions of uh, products orders or data like how much the real time performance of this uh, azure, azure devops because while well, you were deploying right in deployment time it is it was spinning it takes some time right mm -hmm. uh, continuous deployment time yeah so coming to that point sunil yeah if you feel like azure agents are not capable enough or it is taking more time for you to complete the work nothing to worry they support your own agents as well you can configure your own servers with your own softwares and you can add that server as an agent to your azure devops so that you don't need to worry about the azure agents and their performance since you are confident enough that how much memory you need how much ram you need how much configuration you need to do everything since you know you will be happy with your agent this is one of the option where azure supports to have self host that you can host your self hosted agents and where you can run your entire show okay this will be like a private agents yes in the cloud same, you will use the same website same site but you will run your end to end build jobs in your own servers rather than specifying uh, like azure agent you will give your own self agent okay okay otherwise uh, that is the microsoft provided those agents yeah. we will use right? yes okay but as, as per the paper it. model <laughs> as per the paper model perfect Okay. Okay. Got it. Like if you face like performance issues, like how you will resolve it? You will tweak your uh, pipelines or? There are multiple factors, Sunil. Answering this question okay. is a little bit tricky now, but right, when you are yes. doing classes, we can Correct. have a more discussion okay. on this part. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Shan, uh -huh. are we covering the Docker Kubernetes?